We're staying with political development in Mali, where President Ibrahim Boubacar Keita has been arrested by mutiny soldiers. Uh, that's according to a government spokesman that confirmed this to journalists. A Prime Minister, Bobo Sisse, has also been arrested despite earlier appeals for brotherly dialogue. The apparent coup attempt in the West African nation began with gunfire at a key military camp near the capital, Bamako, Tuesday morning. In the city, young men set a government-owned building on fire. It comes hours after disgruntled junior officers detained commanders and took control of the Kati camp, about 15 kilometers, that's nine miles from Bamako. The mutiny has been condemned by regional group ECOWAS, the African Union and former colonial power France. Let's bring in international affairs analyst Paul Ejime. He joins us now in the news at 10 for more on this development. What began as a mutiny appears to have transformed now into a coup. It brings back to mind the events in 2012 when the government's mishandling of a rebellion led to another coup. What do you make of this new development and its potential impact on the fragile peace in Mali? Uh, so, uh, thank you, viewers. Well, you are right in saying that it looks like it's, um, uh, uh, you know, a repeat of what, what happened in 2012, which means really that uh, whether uh, Malians or uh, Africans, whether we have, there's any lesson to be learned. So, what is happening is um, that, um, um, and this is um, an accident that um, was waiting to happen. ECOWAS has tried to uh, mediate, but uh, even today, the envoy, former president, was uh, briefing the Nigerian head of state about his mission last week, where the Constitutional Court was um, being, um, uh, a reconstituted uh, uh, Constitutional Court was being uh, inaugurated. But that the, the protesters in Mali, they don't want to have anything to do with that. And that has now uh, flown uh, the ang anger has now gone into the military, and um, they are now taking um, the law on their own hands by um, arresting um, uh, the president, arresting government officials, and then uh, taking the president and the prime minister to um, to Kati uh, uh, cantonment for questioning, so they said. But nobody has, uh, they haven't come out really. The coup makers have not announced their leader. I think they are bidding their time. And then given the fact that the international um, uh, community is uh, uh, against um, coups uh, in, anywhere, uh, particularly in Africa. The UN uh, Security Council, at the instance of uh, France and some uh, former colonies, are going to be meeting uh, maybe tomorrow. Uh, UN Gen uh, Secretary General Guterres has condemned um, what has happened, asking for the release of the two um, government officials. France has said so, ECOWAS has um, uh, said so, UN, uh, no, uh, EU, and uh, AU. Absolutely, Mr. Ejime. Quite a number of um, groups have um, frowned at this development. But just like you mentioned earlier, prior to this time, a huge number of protesters have been on the streets for months calling for President Keita to step down. Now, some say this might have given uh, some local endorsement to the coup attempt. How do you see this resolved? Well, um, I wish I, I knew. It's um, because they've been trying since uh, 2012, and uh, it hasn't worked. But why should uh, be the, um, uh, you know, the approach or the strategy is to look at the, you know, um, the root causes of what is happening. France, the colonial power, you know, should play a major role. I mean, France has... Uh, troops there. UN has a troop of about uh, 15,000. France, um, about 5,000. The AU also has um, what they call um, uh, Miss Ahel, a mission there. And then ECOWAS is also now pushing to... So it's really um, surprising that all these have not been able to, to um, uh, bring any pressure to bear on the local uh, uh, factors. And what are these local factors? There is economic uh, uh, problem, um, poverty, there is cronyism, there is an uh, allegation of um, uh, embezzlement or corruption against the government. And then there is insecurity, uh, you know, flowing from the northern Mali. 
The government in Bamako cannot control, I mean, there are swaths of land that they cannot control. And, uh, but France, uh, the colonial, former colonial master, knows uh, uh, something about the whole country. Both in the north, where you have these insurgencies and separatist group, the, the Tuareg asking for independence. And then they, they, it has become now, uh, the north has become, because there is no government over there, there is nothing, uh, it's lawlessness that is happening. Uh, it's become now a bed, um, you know, hotbed for uh, insurgency terrorism. That they are now exporting to other countries, Burkina Faso, okay. uh, 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 Niger, and other places, and even Nigeria. So those are the issues that you need to tackle. Absolutely. And then unless you do that, unless you do that you are going to, you know, it's like a, a broken record. And it's unfortunate that uh, perhaps... Uh, Nobody seems to have learned any lesson in this, uh, in this uh, Mali situation. All right, we'll see how regional groups and world powers react to this and uh, bring lasting peace to Mali. International Affairs Analyst Paul Ejime, thank you for talking to us tonight. You're welcome. Thanks for having me.